Hi there, this is David from Ghost Rider Music and Sounds and today I'm going to do a walkthrough video of my latest orchestral music track, Awakening. And this is going to be a long video. So grab something to eat, grab something to drink, make it yourself comfortable and let's dive into this music track. And I will show you which instruments I have used and how I have applied the concept of dynamics the concept of balancing, the concept of panning and EQing. So you get a total view about the first steps uh, before we continue with the upcoming videos about orchestration and how to build a template. Let's dive into this wonderful track, Awakening. Hi there, this is David from Ghost Rider Music and Sounds and my channel is all about how to write music for film, TV and games, sound design and sound recording and my goal is to help you write better music for media. So I've opened up my door and loaded the track Awakening and let's listen to it first entirely and then go sec through it section by section, instrument by instrument, so in more detail. But first, let's listen to it. Okay, we listen to the entire song and let's continue first by which instruments did I use? Well, I did use from the woodwinds a flute, a clarinet and an oboe. From the brass section I've used a tuba, horns and trombones. From the percussion I've added an, an, an harp, but a harp is actually a string instrument, but from the percussions uh, I used a vibraphone, a timpani, cymbal low, a cymbal medium and triangle. From the string section, double basses, pizzicato, and cello, sulpont, corsodino, muted. Also violas, muted, violin second, long, muted, violins first, long, muted, and violin flautando, that's some sort of fluty sound, 
and a harmonics long from a violin and a patch from vocalize and on top i also used a room tone and if you're not familiar what a room tone is it's just let's say it's just noise giving you the ambience that you are actually in a room where a live orchestra has been recorded so it will give you a little bit more realistic feeling and if you look at this the frequency ranges the room tone is in here somewhere there it is you saw a little bit of it there it goes. It's almost not recognizable, but it is a little bit of, let's say, white, pink, pink uh, noise. Okay, so that about the room tone. Let's start with the intro section. So what about the intro? Well, the intro is really nothing special, I guess. It's just setting the mood, setting the tone of the entire track just grabbing your hand and give you a warm welcome in this music track grab my hand and i will take you with me and we are ex we are going to experience a lovely thing with each other and it's just a clarinet a cello violin flautando with a violin harmonics long which will draw you into it into the atmosphere into the purpose the meaning of this music track and the clarinet is one of the symphonic woodwinds from spitfire audio it's in the center well one right center and just around the zero right just neutral if we take a look at the cello, it is 14 to the right, pre -bent. And also about one zero in the volume. When we take a look at the two violins, the flautando and the harmonics. The flautando, 14 to the left, pre -bent. And around one about a zero uh, neutral volume and the harmonics also 14 to the left and zero in the volume from contact they're all using the tree mics so it's not really something special so keep in mind the flutes are in the center and i showed you this in the video about balancing that spitfire records the orchestra with the flutes in the middle and the cello a little bit to the right. That's why we pre it a little bit more to the right, 14. And the violins are placed on the left side of the room, for, uh, the left side of the orchestra. That's why we help them a little bit by pre panning it a little bit of 14 to the left. When we look at the concept of dynamics and we look at the clarinet, Then you will notice that I have drawn a couple of things. A couple of things are interesting. The note velocity is not the same. So don't use tak 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 the same volume of the note velocity. Change that, play with it. And also play with the dynamics of the instrument. And I will show you the expression. This is the expression. It climbs up. It goes down, it goes up, it stays a little bit up, right? That's the expression. Same thing for the modulation and same thing for the vibrato. And that's also applied to the cello and it's also applied to the violin flautando, which is a more basic thing, by the way, because when you look at this one, the expression it just goes up and it stays up and that's the same thing for the modulation 
and it's the same thing for the vibrato. So when you use flat thunder or harmonics, most of the time I just push them up, keep them high in the expression modulation and vibrato. Not with the cello, not with the clarinet in this intro. And I already talked about the room tone. And that is the intro section. So I applied balancing, I applied EQ, oh, EQing, I haven't talked about EQing, yeah. So let's go to the, oh, let's go to the, oh man, mixing panel. The clarinet, well, I've cleaned it up, right? So everything below 230 hertz is cut away and I made a small cut of 3 dB around 390 hertz. When we look at the cello, I cleaned up everything below 75 hertz and I made a little cut around to 290 hertz, 3 dB, with a Q of 1. And when we look at the flautando, I've cut away everything beneath the 200 hertz. I didn't make a cut because there are not many spikes into it. It's just a, it's not necessary for the flautando and even so for the harmonics. And I also cut away everything below the 166 hertz. That is the EQ cleaning up. And that will give you this intro section. And one thing important, and I already addressed it in another video, people playing woodwinds and brass instruments need to breathe. So you have to give some, you, you, need, to, you need to create some space between the MIDI lines. So that are, if you, if you have the ambition that your pieces, your music pieces are being played by real orchestra. And I know for many of us that will never ever happen but if you want to write realistic music just try it it will be more realistic it will be more good sounding and it's just a good way of composing orchestral music that you will apply these breathing points for the people who play with woodwinds and brass instruments so they play a long notes a couple of long notes they have a breathing point and then they continue and they have a breathing point. Make sure that you apply these in your composition. So let's talk about the next section. And that is an interesting section because let's say it, it's a introduction to a next section in your piece, in this piece. With the establishment for the first time of the melody that I will use in the rest of the music track. Let's listen to it first. All right, so this is the section that we are going to talk in detail more. I've used an oboe, a harp, a triangle and a cymbal. And in this piece, pizzicato double bass. Again, when we look at the oboe, woodwind, it's in the middle, 9 dB negative. Keep that in mind, the oboe has, and I've, and I've told this, in the video about, I guess, balancing. I've talked about it in balancing, that the oboe has a very specific 
sound which you recognize immediately and it will spy through a lot of instruments so that's why I've pushed it in my balancing a little bit to the background so 90 B negative the harp which is from Cineharp, Cinesamples, in the center and just neutral. In the center, but, but, but I have to say, this is the Harp 2, the Harp 2 version, and that is the harp that Cineharps has been placed on the left side of the orchestra. So don't be fooled by uh, this one, the pre-panning in the center. It is positioned at the left side of the orchestra but I didn't help it that much. I didn't help it at all because it is already quite, quite panned to the left side. So I didn't need to help that by a little bit more panning. The symbol is from Spitfire Percussion, uh, just in the middle and raised pretty high up, 5.5 dB positive in the plus. I've used a triangle also, Spitfire Percussion triangle in the center and just neutral the double bass pizzicato in the center always in the center because it's a very low low frequency so you want to keep that in the center of your composition of your mix with also a neutral uh, level and that that's it all right so the oboe the harp the cymbal low triangle and double bass there are not many instruments in this section. Ditto in the, in the intro section, but this is also a pretty simple and not, not busy kind of section. And I've did that on purpose because I wanted to give you full attention on the melody that I use. And the melody that I, that I use in this particular music track is introduced by only a harp. So you will have full attention to this melody, which makes it a lot stronger in your brain. And it helps. Again, I reach out my hand and you grab it. And we experience this melody. And you will recognize it through the entire music track after this section, because this is so strong, you only hear it with the harp, with one instrument. Actually, that, that's it, it's one instrument. It's not about the harp. I also could use an, a violin or some of the woodwinds, that doesn't matter. In this case, I've used the harp and that's, that's all to do with the video that's used with this uh, music track because there is a little bit of a flower popping all kinds of, um, I'm do, I, I, I don't know the English word, but there are all kinds popping up and I associate it with a harp. That's why I've used a harp. So it's all about this melody. And as we continue to the next uh, to the next section, this melody comes again exactly the same, but then with a vibraphone. And the only thing that is added at this moment is a double bass pizzicato to sustain the rhythm, to give you some, some, to give you an extra hand, right? The rhythm. And the cello just easily drops in. And you can see that with the MIDI has a very low note velocity and the dynamics and I will show you the expression, for example, and you see the other lines here. It's really slowly climbing up. So the cello is, is, is actually not there, but it smoothly rises and gives you some comfort feeling. And then a build up comes. So let's go back to this one, where we do the melody again with the vibraphone, the double bass pizzicato, the cello. I've added vocalize, just, just, and 
I've used this patch of vocalize. The moving vowels and I just needed some sound to create a little bit more feeling, a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more body to embrace the quietness of the vibraphone and the, the setup. That's why I used this patch and that's the only not orchestral patch in this uh, music track. All right, the vibraphone, I haven't shown that already. This is the vibraphone. It's also Spitfire Audio. It's a beautiful library, Spitfire Audio Percussion. I'm not sure, did I move that? I, I'm not sure, but in the center, let's say it's in the center, just uh, normal uh, levels of volume. And about the EQ cut of the, of the, of the vibraphone, uh, cut everything away below the 250 hertz. Uh, about the symbol, oh, the symbols are also very nice. I did not cut anything about this because this, this patch is already cleaned up and they are high frequency with no rumble on the low side. So I didn't have to clean that one up. And the cello, I already shown you guys that in the intro section, that's just the same cleanup principle. All right, let's move up to the next section in the piece and that's the build-up. Okay, the build-up. The build-up is very interesting. I've I've used a, a couple of layers. I've used the woodwinds, the flute and the clarinet, the horns and the trombones, and the full string family. Uh, not entirely full, because I didn't use the double basses, okay. But I've used the cello, the violas, the violins, the second ones, and the violins, the first ones. Rising up, um, and if you have watched the music video, there's a flower just um, awake, <laughs> a flower that awakes and reveals itself in a fast forward video. and. That's why I have used, I have wrote this uh, build up because it is a beautiful combination with the visuals that you see at that moment. And we have a timpani and we have a cymbal medium to get that final climax. And the string section, um, in this one, I smoothly entered the cello that is in your brain, you will hear that particular sound with the double basses and I only use the vibraphone with it. So this is the introduction, it prepares you to more string, more string sounds which starts with the build up, the rise and that's this combination. And after the first build up, the horns and the trombones and the flutes take over and give it even a more bigger rise with it, with the climax of a timpani and a cymbal medium. Well, the flute, put in the center, just normal one, and a clean up around the 200 hertz. Cut everything away. The clarinet I already talked about, then the horns. Well, the horns are always very interesting. Cinebras core, Positioned 14 to the left, uh, just normal, zero, normal volume. The trombones positioned at the right side, 11 to the right, and also zero, just normal volume. The timpani, I didn't do any cleanup with the timpani, uh, just zero and positioned in the center. Symbol medium is also a Spitfire audio percussion, just normal volume and in the center. So that's nothing really special. The cello already talked about the violas. Well, the violas are cleaned up. Everything below 130 hertz cut away. And I make, made a cut of 3 dB around 265 hertz with a Q of one. And the violins, the second violins, 
first time I used them in this composition, Spitfire Audio also. Made a cut around 170 hertz and cut away everything below that. And they are positioned, yeah, I haven't shown you guys that, around 9 to the left and just normal volume, zero, around zero. And the first violins, also Spitfire Audio, positioned 14 to the left and just normal volume around zero. That's it. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. That about the build up the rise. So this is the first section, total section of this music track where I established the melody. I, I, I took you by the hand. I introduced the song, the atmosphere, where we were going to. And we ended it with a rise, with the climax. And then again, we are going to enter familiar territory because the melody that you recognize immediately because you only heard it with the harp and then with the vibraphone will be played again, but this time with the violins. And then it continues and then the horns take over the melody. Oh, actually, they don't take it over. The violins continue and the horns are there and just, just adding up. Oh yeah, I know the melody. Oh, there's an extra sound that I didn't recognize before. The horns. All right, the horns are make a combination with the strings. It's a very common a very common combination to make. The tuba is there and the tuba doesn't play very much in this composition and that's I guess and, 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 and I will talk about in some different videos about this but when you write orchestral music when you write maybe compose uh, music in general you have you you need to fight the urge to override it's, it's okay that a tuba, for instance, has not much work in a composition. Maybe plays one or two notes in the entire composition. That's okay. They don't have to be playing all the time. And so fight that urge of putting all the instruments in your composition at the same time so that they all are playing. It's not necessary. Less is less is more I would say less is more but this is the the only time that the tubas play and I've talked about this in another video and again I I think it is balancing that the tubas and the double basses are some sort of volume knob to the section so when you add a tuba it just sounds a little bit louder you don't hear the you don't hear the the tuba but when it's not there you are probably missing something so let me play this again. Did you hear a tuba? Right, let's let's mute it. Unmute it. I hear the difference. It's a very subtle, but it's there. The tuba just adds a little bit more, more massiveness to it. It's not there, but it's just making it bigger. That's the purpose of the tuba at this moment. I didn't need that in the in the next sections. And this one is interesting, right? Because I've done something here that is different. Which one did actually play the original melody? 
It's a question. Do you, do you know which one plays the original melody? Was it the flute or was it the horn? It's an interesting question. If you know the answer to it, write it down in the comments. Write it down in the comments. I'm really, <laughs> really curious. Um, This is the point where I introduce a counter melody. This is the horn. I will say I, I'll, I will get them together. The horn and the melody, right? Uh, the horn and the flute. I'm sorry. The horn and the flute. And let's grab the original. Oh, damn! That's the wrong key. Let's go back. This one and this one, right? You see that the original melody of the harp is this. And it's played by this one. That are the horns. So I introduce a counter melody here with the flutes to make it a little bit more interesting. Otherwise, you probably thought, yeah, David, I've heard that melody a lot now and it's getting a little bit boring, right? And I understand that if you thought that. That's why I've introduced a counter melody and your brain keeps track of the original melody. That's, that's still my hand that you have, that you grabbed, and that's giving you comfort, right? That's giving you comfort because you're familiar with the original melody. And your brain thinks, wow, wow, th this sounds really interesting. There's something new to it. It's just a, a simple counter melody. It's just a simple counter melody. And I guess I will be talking in one of the upcoming videos about writing counter melodies, uh, some little tricks that you can use to uh, get a good combination about your original melody and a counter melody, I guess. All right, we continue with uh, another one. And what I did here is actually the same. It's the same counter melody with the original melody, but I switched it, right? Now the flute plays the original melody and the strings, the violins, which were in here, are coming back again, giving you another tone, another color. You think, oh wow, something is happening again. It grabs your attention. And yes, I still have your hand. I still have your hand because you have the original melody, which is stuck in your head, played by the flute. And the strings, they play the counter melody. Same at the end. This time the flute again play the counter melody and the clarinet plays the original melody. Switched it back again. Let me show you the flutes. This is the counter melody. This is the original melody. This is the counter melody. It's just a simple trick, right? But that's composition. That has nothing to do with balancing and EQ cleaning up things and padding and that sort of stuff. But it doesn't matter. It's just fun to talk about, right? So this is the entire song, Awakening. I've showed you all the instruments, how I have panned them, how I did the EQ cleaning to get rid of the low rumble shit in the instruments, sorry for that word, how I did the balancing, the volume. And what you could do if you wrote such a song is just um, get away of, uh, get rid of all the MIDI and just save it as a template. Then this is already pre-balanced, pre-panned, pre-cleaned up. And you can sit down and write. And then when you have done your composition, then you can start mixing with a cleaned up, good balanced, good band composition. And that will save you a lot of time and make your life a lot more easier. So I promised you a very long video when I started with this one. And I guess I managed that. I'm not sure how long this is already running. I guess around 30 minutes, I'm not sure. But I enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed it too and that you have learned something from it. That you took some notes about the 
uh, balancing the pre-panning and the EQ cleaning cuts that I did with this music track, with this specific instruments that I used. And that it will give you a little bit more comfort to do these things. It's not magic, it's really simple, basic stuff that will help you and will boost your work process, your workflow, and will give you a clean start to start composing music without worrying about worrying uh, these, these things, about these things. And that you can start with mixing um, with, a, with, a good, with a good result. So if you enjoyed this video, if you appreciate this video, um, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want me to do more of these walkthrough videos. And ding that bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. And next week I will do another video. I'm not sure if it is templates or if it is orchestration. And if you have a preference, just give me a shout out in the comments. And I will see you next week.